Cabin Artists presents The Stephen James Wiley Show A American Septic Proudly serving Phoenix, Arizona and surrounding areas since 1953. At A American, we can pump, clean and repair your current septic system with ease. Or we can design and install a brand new state-of-the-art system. No matter the problem, our Cracker Jack crew of expert technicians have got you covered. Every Jack, Jill, and Diane gets a thrill when they hear the A American pump truck coming up the road. A American Septic. Find us on the World Wide Web at aamericanseptic.com. That's aamericanseptic.com. This program is being brought to you by Safety Net. Helping foster youth grow into adulthood and face the challenge of tomorrow. For more information, visit safetynetinlandnw.org. Well, howdy, howdy, friends. It's me, your vivacious host, Am I vivacious? I'm not sure I represent that. I don't know that I know what it means. I think it's a good thing, though. I think it's a really good thing. I want to be vivacious. I hope you're feeling vivacious. Let's both go look it up. I have been known to use words that I think mean one thing, and then it turns out it means another thing. I actually told a friend of mine recently at a party she and informed us she was going to turn 50. I've known her since I was born. And in an effort to be uplifting, because I'm just a joyful and loving person, I said, no, God, no, you're, you're, that's impossible. You're a young, you look virile as, as, as heck. Um, which turns out, uh, it's a reference to kind of a, a very aroused man, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if it's aroused. Hold on. I'm looking it up. Viral, meaning having strength, energy, and a strong sex drive typically used for a man. Anyhow, in that conversation, it was pointed out to me um, upon further uh, looking, it, that that's not, I shouldn't have probably described her that way. Um, so I've learned. Um, so if you look up vivacious, I don't even know how to spell it, so I'm not going to look it up right now. And it doesn't work. Who cares? Let's use it today. Let's use it together. You're vivacious. I'm vivacious. I feel vivacious as hell. You better believe it. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. It's a solo time, just you and me touching hearts, embracing as if we are old, old friends. And maybe we actually are because you know me that well or you're a perfect stranger. Um, either way, um, in the most appropriate manner possible, let's all touch hearts today. I wanted to share not a lot, not a ton. I could spitball all kinds of BS your way, but I, I'll, I'll try to keep it relegated to stories about uh, the misuse of virility. No, I, I uh, have had some adventures. I thought I'd tell you about them. First thing I wanted to share, because I like movies, and for a while I have felt compelled to watch westerns. Didn't know why. And of course, like most compulsions that make no sense, I ignored it for months. I thought, well, that's neat, Steve. Uh, what else? What other weird thing do you want to do? And then I didn't do it, didn't do it, didn't do it. And then I got sick about a month and a half ago, and I was like, F it. I'm just going to go watch some westerns. I'm stuck in friggin' bed, miserable. So I fired up some El Dorado, John Wayne, 1965, I think. It's in color. Then, and that was delightful. I think uh, Robert Mitchum was in that. 
and then uh, moved on to True Grit, John Wayne. You got to remember, John Wayne in the late 60s was an older man at that juncture, but he's still doing his horseback riding work for the most part. There was a couple things I was like, John Wayne didn't do that. That had to hurt. Uh, but they were wonderful movies. Um, I've seen other John Wayne older movies, but I just hadn't watched them recently. So started there. And then I thought, you know, I think I want to watch the early Clint Eastwood stuff, right? The stuff where he really that took him, because he was on Rawhide, um, which was a Western television show, right? And he was a supporting actor. He was not lead dog. Um, and Sergio Leone was making movies in Spain, I believe. But I think he's Italian. And he made what we all now call and have called for decades spaghetti westerns because they were made in Europe. But because that area of Spain, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, even though I can't hear you, uh, it looks just like the American West, right? Arizona, California, Nevada, blah, 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 the desert. So Sergio Leone paid Clint Eastwood... $15,000 to do his first movie called Fist Full of Dollars, 1963. So I was started there. And the ADR work is not good. ADR meaning voiceover. So all the dialogue, they retract them saying it later. So it doesn't match up right. But the movie is good enough and compelling enough, which is a testament to the storytelling and the writing and everything, that you get over it after about two or three minutes. Fistful of Dollars was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Sergio Leone is a good writer. He and his people he writes with. And then moved on to A Few Dollars More, which came out two years later, I believe in 65. Did I just say the other one came out in 65? Anyhow, I'm bastardizing the years. Doesn't matter. It all happened in the 60s. Uh, This was the second one. It's better. It's really good. I really liked it a lot. I mean... Honestly, we, I encourage you, go watch old movies. They tell good stories. They're not simplistic BS stories. They're good stories. It's, it's a, a few dollars more is wonderful. And then two years later, Sergio made The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, which we all know. We all know that. I bet none of you have watched the movie. I hadn't. So I finally did. And it was friggin' dope. Loved it. And it's as good or better than a few dollars more. It's probably better. Um, Great story. And then I am in the middle right now of the movie that Sergio did two years after that. I believe it's 68 or 9. Called Once Upon a Time in the West. Two hours, 45 minutes. It's long. Um... Uh, it's got a lot of good actors in it. Their names are all slipping my mind at the moment. Um, doggone it. You know him. Charles Bronson, I think, is in it. Um, and Henry Fonda. Very young, young versions of those fellers. I think they're all passed away now. It's good. I'm really enjoying it. I'm halfway. Oh, and uh, Jason Robard's in it. Jason Robard plays the lead in The Ballad of Cable Hogue. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Um, it's awesome. And then there's, I don't know the lady, the actress's name, but she is friggin' gorgeous in this movie and she's a great actress. Um, just, you know, it's a good movie so far. I'm liking it. It won a ton of awards. Uh, apparently I was reading about an IMDb. So that's what I've been doing. Watching Westerns that, and, um, I watched the four hour while I was sick. I watched the four hour documentary on Warner brothers, hundred years of Warner brothers. If you have HBO max, you can watch it. It's wonderful. Really wonderful. If you like cinema, the golden age of Hollywood, all the stuff, I love it. You don't have to love it, but I love it. It's, it's you know, it's so funny because it's so present to us, like Hollywood, movies, blah, blah. It's only been around for 100 years. 100 plus, barely 100 plus years. In the history of the world. But we just think it's a given. Bollywood, right? It's been around for what? 50 years? I don't know. I don't really know. But I've watched Bollywood movies. They're they're fun. I like all the dancing. The gang dancing. There's always a gang of guys and a gaggle of gals, and they all dance around and have fights and fall in love. It's wonderful. The music's great. Anyhow, that's not where I was going. 
So what? So what's the point, Steve? There is no point. I just want to share it with you because it's fun. And, and if you get inspired and go watch Westerns because of this little talkie talk, I've succeeded. And that's all I want is to enrich and in, 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 uh, in something, embolden. I want to embolden you to feel vivacious and watch Westerns today. Uh, what else? What else? I went on a long road trip, 3,500 miles solo road trip. Why, Steve? Why would you do that? Well, let me tell you about it. I decided to buy a device, a medical device. I have tinnitus or tinnitus, as I've called it for my whole life. And that sounds a hell of a lot better than tinnitus. But apparently the way it's always been said is tinnitus. Kind of like diabetes and diabetes, right? Although I don't know anybody who wants to say diabetes. Diabetes f sounds better. It rolls off the tongue a little better. Diabetes sounds like a bad meal. Like a, like a steaming hot pile of diabetes. Not good. Uh, this is tinnitus. It's a ringing in the ears. Ringing in the head is more accurate. Uh, it's a deal with the auditory system. Many of you might have it or some semblance of it. And for some of us, it gets so effing loud you want to bash your head through the sheetrock walls of your home and um, but there's never been a treatment for it there are masking devices through hearing aids that actually do help people I know people who use those <clears throat> and then this happened this is a new development in the treatment of tinnitus and it's came, it came out of Ireland, a company called Lanier, L-E-N-I-R-E. -E. Look it up if you are interested. They, it got approved by the FDA a year ago, and the FDA is never wrong. Can I get an agreement on that? Never wrong. No, I trust that they have vetted this deal. Despite uh, human frailty and failure, I believe the FDA has done a wonderful thing and approved this device. And people, you can buy it. Now, my insurance won't cover it because they're like, what? We don't care. Um, but I'm going to ask him anyway, actually. I'm going to follow up on that. But it's not a cheap deal. But I went down to Salt Lake City as a part of this. It was kind of what inspired this road trip and bought it, met with the doctor there. She's actually from Alaska, but she travels around to meet people. Uh, she sets up camp in different locations. People come who are nearby and pick up their, their setup. It's an audio device. It has a, has a set of headphones and this thing that goes in your mouth. That It's a bimodal stimulation, they call it. It plays sounds, some music, some white noise. I have no friggin' clue how they came up with what it does. But uh, 75 to, depending on who you talk to, 90% in some cases. In her case, she said 90% of the patients who are using this are getting some form of relief. In a minority of cases, the ringing in their head goes away entirely, which I cannot even imagine uh, what that sounds like um, or it doesn't sound like. Hell, I'd probably feel lonely. I'd be like, where'd, the, where'd my ringing friends go? Uh, I'd be willing to experience that loneliness, though. So I picked that up, and then I decided to make a, a run of it and went down to Arizona I, I'd rented a car, so I didn't feel bad about putting a bunch of miles on it. Went down to Arizona, hung out with my good buddy Todd, golfed a couple of days. It was beautiful because it was balls cold in Spokane. And then um, went over to California where I kind of felt inspired to just sit for a couple of days and I wrote. I wrote a uh, concept, a TV show concept. I sat in the Writers Guild of America Library. I reserved a spot there and sat amongst the sacred writings of great Hollywood and all the scripts that have been registered there. It was actually really cool. I enjoyed it. And then I went and had some fine dinner at Craig's of Hollywood. Wonderful restaurant. They make a great filet mignon. And uh, it was fun. Good crowd there. Tom Arnold was nearby. It was weird, actually, that Tom Arnold, he was like two tables away from me. And I got to visit with him, and he was in Spokane. I did not go, uh, hey, Tom, it's Steve. Remember me? We were good buddies. No, I didn't do that. But it was just cool he was there and kind of odd because I was like, what are the odds, you know? Um, plus, I like Tom Arnold. He's cool. He made a movie called The Stupids like 30 years ago. It's probably not a good movie, but I loved it. Uh, so I did that and then drove home. And it was a meaningful, good trip. And now I've got this tinnitus, tinnitus device that I will be using for the next 90 days. 90 flipping days. Uh, and actually maybe beyond because they say 
some people use it longer. But uh, fingers crossed. I'm really hoping it does something. So there. I thought I'd share that with you because if you are a person out there who has the same struggle I do with this particular issue, uh, it might be something to look into. And if it does help me, I'm, I will be more than happy to share uh, the progress there. So that is uh, something else I wanted to bring you in on. What else, Steve? What else do you got? You got anything else to share? Hell yeah, I do. I want to talk to you about Instagram. If you see a bunch of posts that are reels of highlights of this show, I'm reposting all of them because I deleted them all because I have OCD about the aesthetics of my profile. It is vain. It is stupid, but I don't care. It's my profile. I can do whatever the hell I want with it. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of social media, but if I'm going to have to look at my profile, I want it to be aesthetically pleasing. So I'm re-uploading my reels in a manner that when you see them all on the thing, it'll look cooler than it did. It just looked messy and was making me feel nuts. So you're not going to go to my profile and look anyway. I don't go to anyone else's profile and look at their crap. Nobody does. It's entirely for me. But you're going to see it happen when the things pop up and you're like, what the hell? I already saw this, Steve. What are you doing? That's what that's what's going on. All right. Forgive me. Just indulge my vanity. It's fine. Um, it's going to be great. Trust me. It's just going to be the best. You're going to love it. Uh, but I noticed Rick Rubin's, you know, uh, profile is, uh, really aesthetically pleasing to me. Very minimalistic, but, and everything's laid out very nice. And if you've got to steal cool from anybody, I want to steal cool from Rick Rubin because Rick's pretty fucking cool. Um, that's all I have to say about that. So that's going to happen. I'm sorry, but hopefully you'll get over it. And maybe you'll just re-enjoy the wonderful highlights of my guests and I talking. It's joyful. It's triumphant. What else? Oh, I deleted the Instagram app off my phone. So if you send me messages and I don't respond, it's because I'm using the web browser to use Instagram because it keeps me from scrolling and wasting <clears throat> the precious moments of my life on social media, which is the biggest brain suck on the face of God's earth. So uh, that's happening. Maybe you'd find that useful. Delete the app. Just use Safari, and you can check your stuff, and you can actually respond to messages. It's just clunky, really clunky, and it makes you not want to use it, which is exactly the point, right? So that's that. Other uh, note, on re with regard to my music, uh, I had a horrible thing happen. I hired a promotion company to promote my EP called The Muse. Five songs. I made m music videos for it, and it was cool, and they did these promotions on blogs and playlists on Spotify. And then a month and a half ago, I was notified by my aggregator or distributor at TuneCore that somebody had, that my music had been promoted with bots. There were phony streams on Spotify for my music, which is not in accordance with Spotify guidelines. Sadly, it's not unusual, but TuneCore has a zero strikes or one strike and you're out policy. So I find out that day, hey, you did this, which I didn't do it on purpose, and your record's yanked off of all music platforms, and uh, you should have known better. Have a nice day. Don't do it again. Which I'm like, okay. So I paid a reasonable amount of money to uh, totally screw my music. It sucks. So I got kind of pissed, and I just yanked, I think, all but one song off of my stuff and I'll probably just dump TuneCore's ass but it's my fault I shouldn't have uh, apparently hired this company I should have known what I didn't know I guess I it's it's a real kick in the nuts it sucks um, but I just got to deal with it and move on I do have a store on Bandcamp you can find the link it's on my website stephenjameswiley.com but it's a bummer and it's a it's a setback let's call it a setback but you know what it's okay life's gonna move on um, I didn't really cry about it. I had about 10 minutes of, well, that sucks. F them. And then you just got to move on. Keep on smiling. Keep on loving people, right? So that happened. If you go to find my music on anything, you're not going to find it. Except Bandcamp. Glorious Bandcamp. So that happened. I just want to make you aware of it. Um, we'll kind of see how that all flows and goes. 
Uh, fun thing I've got going on, Molly Allen and I are doing a show April 20th here in Spokane at the Civic Theater, uh, and it is a table read. It's a write, uh, uh, reader's theater, they call it, and there's a bunch of reader's theater going on that week. And uh, in our case, though, it's Steve, uh, Molly Allen and Stephen James Wiley present Lake Town, taking a chance on Christmas. So we have actors who are going to be table reading uh, our script that we pitched to Hallmark, and actually we're still pitching it to others. Um, but it's a very Hallmarky Christmas movie that we wrote, and and we've table read it before, and it read beautifully. So we got some actors that are going to do that, and then they'll be doing a, a short thing that we wrote in addition to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you go to Civic Theater website, you can check that out and join us that evening if you'd like to. It's a one-night-only gig, so uh, come out and have some fun. Anyhow, that is what I got for you. I hope you're doing well. I hope your day is good. And if it wasn't, I hope it got better because you heard me talking about all this crazy shit. Uh, I love you. Take care. Peace out.